What's happening, everyone? It's been a few weeks since I did the first build breakdown on my Forrester XT, and I got a lot of great responses, so I'm going to keep this little series going. We still got a bunch of stuff to talk about. We talked all about the exterior the last time, all the aftermarket modifications, all the custom stuff, and so if you haven't seen that video, I'll throw a link in the description. Uh, there are a couple of things I still want to touch on. The engine bay, the interior, and then the underside suspension and handling. And I think that that's what we're going to focus on today. I've had a ton of comments and questions about the rear wheel drive swap on this, something you don't see typically on a Subaru, and the fact that it's kind of a stance build, what went into making this fitment work on a car like this. So what I'm going to do is get this thing up in the air, which is easier said than done with a low car like this, and then we're going to get underneath and start talking about all the modifications that have made this thing into what it is. Just like in that last video, what I'm going to do is go over all of the modifications that we can see here, and then at the end, I'll record a bunch of little clips with some better lighting so you can see the parts up close and personal. Then I'll also list them in the description in the video. If you have any questions about anything, just throw it down in the comments, and I'll definitely answer those. The big things that you see here are the VSKF wheels. I already talked about specs and sizing on those in the last vid, so check that out. But otherwise, the big standout piece here is the Cadillac ATS Brembo. So this isn't just a fake sticker. This is actually from a Cadillac. It's become a pretty popular swap with Subarus because you can get these brand new for like 120, 150 bucks per caliper. Uh, and then you don't have to uh, worry about any sort of issues if it has you know 150,000 miles plus on it, like a lot of the STI Brembos out there. Then I also complemented with StopTech stainless steel lines, some nice DBA 4000 rotors, uh, some track pads. And then over here, we can also see the coilovers poking out. These are Fortune 500 coilovers. What's really great about those is you can get them custom built to your specs. So because this is a rear wheel drive car, because it's a stance build, I wanted the spring rate to be higher. So these are 16K and 14K. And I also upgraded to Swift Springs and radial bearings, uh, as well as camber plates all around. So it's kind of the upgraded version of an already great coilover. This might be a little bit harder to see, but I want to show you all the white line upgrades I have underneath because there are a lot of them. I have their beefier sway bar. I believe that's 27 millimeter. Their end links, their uh, tie rods, ball joints, and then the roll center correct kit in the back. Uh, and that's all surrounding an OEM STI aluminum control arm. So essentially with this whole package, what we've got is a grocery getter on the outside, but something that handles like an STI track car on the road. If you know your Foresters, you know that the 04 to 08 SG generation like this one is the only one that came with a manual and turbocharged option from the factory, which this one started out life as with a five speed. Now what I did is drop that out and swapped in a six speed transmission, much stronger out of an 04 STI. And it's a little bit hard to see underneath the car, but you can see the reverse lockout right there. So one of the reasons I did that is to be able to facilitate that rear wheel drive swap. In other words, it could handle that power going to the rear wheels. And what I did was replace the DCCD, the electronically controlled center diff inside of that transmission with a PPG rear spool, which again, sent all that power to the rear wheels. After I put in the six-speed transmission, I also took out the OEM drive shaft and replaced it with a drive shaft shop carbon fiber one piece, which basically is able to transfer all of that power to the rear uh, a lot more efficiently. There's less things to break and it's more lightweight. And in addition, I also got their drag axles. So those are rated for over 700 horsepower and they're able to fit on a five by 100 hub with an R180 diff out of an STI like I've got set up right here. Next up, I'm gonna pull this rear wheel off and show you what I've had to upgrade in the back to facilitate that rear wheel drive conversion. And a lot of people ask me, what do I have to do in order to do the same thing? Well, really, if you just had the OEM car with the factory five speed, you could just weld the center diff, take out those front axles, and you are gonna be technically a rear wheel drive. The major problem with that is you're gonna start breaking all the things that you didn't reinforce. The drive shaft, the axles, your bushings, you're gonna get a lot of wheel hop. So it's easy to convert a Subaru 
Subaru to rear wheel drive, but it's hard and expensive to do it the proper way like this. You're going to see once I pull this wheel off, how many of the things I had to reinforce and upgrade in order to be able to do burnouts and donuts and the things that you guys have seen in some of my other videos. I gotta say, the one major thing I miss about working at Grimspeed is having access to a lift, and unfortunately I don't have that anymore. I've just got jack stands, so you're gonna have to bear with me as I duck underneath the car and show you what's going on under here. One thing you'll notice is a lot of aftermarket stuff, but before we get to that, let me show you the things I've upgraded that are OEM. So the diff, as I mentioned, is an R180 out of an 04 STI, and uh, basically it replaced the R160 in here, being able to handle more power to the rear, as well as those drive shaft shop axles that I mentioned. These are rated for something like 700 plus horsepower, a lot beefier, actually meant for drag BRZ applications. So it should handle whatever I throw at it, and it has so far. And then here you've got uh, a bunch of white line, just like up in front. I've got white line end links, sway bar, the sway bar mount. I've got lateral links from them. And then what you don't see is some of the stiffened bushings on the subframe, the subframe reinforcement bolts right here. And then I've also got aftermarket trailing arms on either side right there. On the exterior, I've upgraded the brakes just like in the front. So this is a WRX uh, limited two-pot caliper. I've got the DBA rotors back here, extended studs just like all around. And then, of course, the counterpart to the front coilovers, those Fortune 500s with a little bit of damage from the inside of uh, my wheel, apparently. Well, there you have it. That is my drivetrain and suspension components in a nutshell. I'm sure I've missed a few small things here and there, but overall, the major pieces are those big Brembo brakes, the coilovers, the six-speed transmission, and drive shaft shop things, and then all of those reinforcements that I made in the back that are able to facilitate that power going to the rear wheels. Now, a few of the questions that I get are, would you recommend doing a rear-wheel drive swap on a Subaru, and would you do it again? And I would say, Yes, I would do it again to one of my Subarus, but as far as recommending it, it really depends on your goals and what you want to achieve with the car. Because as I mentioned, swapping a Subaru to rear-wheel drive is relatively easy and inexpensive, but it's also going to be unreliable. If you want to do it what I would call the right way, then it is going to cost quite a bit and you're going to have to put in a lot of wrench time to make it happen. And if you want to take it to the next level beyond what I've done, which is something I may do eventually, you're going to want to do more aftermarket and more custom components. You could fit a lot of the 350 and 370Z stuff under here. TSS uh, Fab makes subframes for the rear. You can run an R200 diff on that. You could do hybrid Z axles. You can do aftermarket hubs on these and really beef everything up to a more reliable format, just like it came stock on those Z chassis. So we'll see if I get to that point, but for now, this thing does its job of being able to do burnouts and donuts whenever I want, and I haven't had any issues uh, since I've converted it over. So it's been a good decision for me. What I recommended for you guys, I'd say if you're ready to pay to play, then go for it. Well, I think that just about does it. What I'm going to do is grab those clips and throw a montage together like I promised, so stick around for that. But otherwise, I want to thank you for tuning into this video. I want to thank you for liking and subscribing. That is a huge help for me. I just want to let you know to stick around for more of this. We are going to be talking about the engine in a future episode, the interior of the car, and then hopefully by then, some of the ice and snow outside will have thawed and I could take this out for a drive, get some of those rolling clips and exhaust clips that you guys have been asking me for. So plenty more to come on this car, and then of course, course, I'm working on the GC Impreza budget build that's right behind the camera. That's probably going to be the next episode dropping, so stay tuned for that. All right, thank you.